Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. We are adding content to CheapControls.com so you can download some extra documents used in this video. In this video, we're going to go back into sync versus async. We had some questions that came in after our last video on this, asking for an actual example. We don't get many requests through email, but we got three or four. And Normally we just get emails from our mothers, so it's nice to get something from an actual viewer. We're going to show synchronous versus asynchronous using a delay again to control a flashing light and a heater to show a real world example. In this example we're going to use an LED and we've got this unsigned long for our LED milliseconds which we'll use for our asynchronous example. In the first part here though we're going to do our synchronous example so we won't need this yet. We're going to set a boolean for an LED so it'll display either true or false. We're going to have our heater set true or false too. I don't actually have a heater, we're just going to simulate it for this. And we're going to have a counter that's going to count up every time we read the temperature. And I'll explain that as we get into it and then we'll have the temperature itself. We're not going to read a temperature, we're going to read the analog input but I don't have anything hooked up to it, so it's just going to read random values. But for what we're doing, it shouldn't matter. We have our serial port set up so we can see the output. And then we have to set the pin modes. We're going to use pin 12 as our LED and pin 13 as our heater. We'll delay for one second, and then we're going to print where our lap counter is sitting at. We initiated it to zero to start, so it'll print zero the first time. And then we're going to set it to zero, because after we read it, we want to reset it. And then we're going to write a high to, in other words, we're going to turn the LED on. And we're going to print LED on, and we're going to give the current milliseconds from when the program started. And then we're going to delay another second, we're going to turn the LED off, and once again, we're going to read out the milliseconds from when the program started. Then we're going to go down here and we're going to read the temperature on pin A0. We're going to print that temperature. We're going to increment the counter. Every time we read this temperature, we're going to increment this counter. And if the temperature is less than 512, because if you remember, the analog reading is going to be between 0 and 1024. So we made that the halfway point. So if it's less than that, we're going to turn the heater on. If, in any other case, we're going to turn the heater off. So I'm going to run this now, and the interesting thing to watch for will be this temp reading counter. How many times does it read this analog reading before it turns the light on? I'm going to turn off the auto scroll and let it fill the screen. Okay, so when we started off, the lap counter said zero, because that's what we set it to. And the light turns on at about a, a second, a thousand milliseconds approximately, and then the light turned off at about 2,000 milliseconds, or two seconds in. It took a reading of the temperature, which remember, we don't have it hooked up to anything, so it's just going to be random numbers. And then the next time, before the lights turned on again, the lap counter was to one. So we only read the temperature one time before the light came on, and that happens every single time. And we're also, if you also notice that it was 999 on that first delay, but it was 3001, which is two seconds later, 5002, so we get off a little bit. It's not as precise as maybe we would like. For this example, it's probably fine, but if you are really looking for precision, a delay may not be your choice. But notice that this lap counter only goes one time. So let's go back to the code. So if you understand the way that the Arduino works, every statement is executed every time you go through the loop. So it may make perfect sense to you that it only incremented one time, right here. And then when it goes back up and goes through it, we set it back to zero. So we're going to delay for one second. So in other words, the program is going to stop for one second. What we really want is not to delay, but we really want this print light on to only happen every two seconds. 
Same with the light off every two seconds. And every one second to do the other one. So they're off by a second. So if we were just to take this and make an if statement that only runs every second. So we'll get our current milliseconds, whatever it is. So if it is greater than or equal to, if we put 1000 here, the very first time that this runs, it would wait until the milliseconds hit one second before it ran this. But we want it to wait, after it runs at once, we want it to wait another thousand and another thousand and another thousand. And this is where this variable up here, LED milliseconds, comes in. And we set it to zero originally. So we're going to copy this. I have that bet going with the editor again that I won't have any miscompiles. So I'm going to do some copying and pasting. So since this is equal to zero, the first time this runs, it's going to skip everything that's in here for one second because it's zero plus one second. But the next time it runs through here, it would run because this would still be one second or one thousand. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this LED. Actually, I'm going to copy and paste it again. And we're going to add 1,000 to it. So that way, the next time that it runs through this, it's going to be 1,000 plus 1,000, or it's not going to execute until the second second has passed. And then when it runs again, it'll add another 1,000, so it'll be the third second. So this function in here, or this if statement, is only going to execute every second. And when it doesn't, it's going to pass and it's going to continue to do this down here. So we don't need the delays anymore. We can get rid of those. So instead of turning the light on and turning the light off, we can get rid of this and we can get rid of this because we're not going to turn it on and off. What we're going to do is we're just going to alternate it. We're going to use the not symbol and then do a digital read. of pin 13, or excuse me, pin 12. So every time we run, run through this, we're going to take this LED and we're going to add a thousand to it. So it, this will not execute again for another second. We're going to take this temperature read counter, or lap counter, and we're going to print it. We're going to set it back to zero. And then we're going to flip whatever pin 12 is. We're going to make it or it'll go from on to off or off to on. And in this case, we're just going to print light changed. And we're still going to print the current number of milliseconds since, oops. And we're still going to print the number of milliseconds since this program was started, just so we can see the accuracy of it. And we really don't need to do anything else down here, but we'll leave it in place. The other thing is I'm going to add a, a line in here so that it moves it to the next line. And this we're going to leave the same. So this temp reading counter is still going to increment every time it reads this. And it should happen more often because as this loops, there's nothing to stop it from looping. So if the time hasn't expired, it's going to go ahead and jump down here. And it's going to skip that until the second comes up and then it will run this. So I'm going to upload and run this now. Well, actually, I'm going to compile it and see if I won or lost the bet this week. We'll find out. Yeah, I got it. So now we're going to run it, and we'll see what happens. I'm going to clear the output as soon as it gets ready. Okay, now the, if you can see the problem here, the temperature, it's reading the temperature. If we go back to the code, 
we're printing this temperature. So what happens is within that second, it's missing this. So it's printing the temperature over and over and over. And then every second it will do this. So if we go back over to here and we scroll down, we should see a temperature about every second. It's hard to find right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to eliminate this reading so we get a better idea of what's going on. And the light changed after one second, but it, it was 1,026 instead of one second. So it was an extra 26 milliseconds past where we wanted it to change. So we'll just comment this line out. So it won't print that over and over. And now we'll upload it again. Okay, so now our lap counter and our light changed. So our light changed at 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. It's very accurate right now. And the other thing is this lap counter. So it's 8,300. So by simply changing this and allowing it to not stop the Arduino from processing, we're reading this pin 8,300 times approximately. You can see that this one was 800. 8,291, but approximately 8,300 times every time we go through this loop. So this illustrates how fast the Arduino runs and how much you can do in one cycle of the loop. And by putting that delay really hampers what it is you can do. Because in this example, what if you needed to turn the heater on immediately? Or the reverse, what if it was a circumstance where the heater had ramped up and you needed to shut off and you don't have that two seconds? Or there's another delay or process where you're dumping chemicals or something like that. You would want it to happen immediately. And you can tell that this is read at 8,000 times in one loop or 8,000 times in one second. So that's quite a bit of... That's quite a bit more data that can be gathered or switches that can be checked if you use this asynchronous method over the synchronous method. One thing that's interesting though is you can see that the light changed exactly on the second. Two second, three second, four second, five second, six second right here. But remember when we had the serial print inline in there it caused the the light change to be off. We're going to add that back in and see if it causes it to be off more and more as the program goes on. Using the delay, you'll notice that it gets more and more out of sync as the program moves. Whereas using this method, even if something slows it down and delays it, I don't think that it will cause that to happen over and over. The problem is, is we're going to read 8,000 of these, so it'll be a lot of scrolling. So instead, what we're going to do is we're just going to print a number. A. And we're not going to put a line break in it. So now we'll upload this. Okay, and so now it's printing out, and you can see at the two second point, at the three second point, and it's off by a little bit. And the reason that it's off a little bit is as you hit this point right here, let's say it was 999 milliseconds right here. Well, it wasn't greater than a thousand, so it skipped. Well, it took a few milliseconds to get back up to here. And that's the distance that you're off or the value that you're off in the second. But since we're adding a thousand every time, it's always going to be looking at that next second. So it's not going to get it's not going to get more and more off as you run the program. If we make a change here, so this millisecond in this case when it ran through here was at 1022. So if we instead make it equal to the current millisecond, instead of just adding a thousand and now we run it, it should get more and more out of whack because this was at 10, 2022 milliseconds added to that and it'd be off a little bit more every time. But we'll run it just to make sure. And you'll notice that it's not. I would have expected it to get more and more off as it went. 
And it might be. We'll let it run here for a minute. I'll pause the video here and we'll let it run for a couple minutes and we'll see if it gets off more and more. And you can see we're up to 160 milliseconds off. Now I'm unsure about the timing of it. I'm going to rerun it just to see if it stays closer to the exact second measurement. So we'll undo that change. We'll upload it. I'm going to pause the video again and let it run for a little while and then I'll check it again. Yeah, and you can see it stays within that 19 to 22 millisecond error on the timing, which is what we would expect because this always increments this value by a thousand, whereas making it equal to this would increment it by more than a thousand if there was an error. It would just take the error and add it to it every time. I hope this video makes synchronous versus asynchronous a little bit more clear. And I hope it explains this portion of it here. Whenever you use milliseconds instead of just a delay, it needs to be part of a conditional statement, and then it executes the things within that statement. It's kind of a hard topic to grasp, but if you just keep doing it and change some values around, it begins to make sense. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.